Hello, this is Bob Cook here talking about relationship psychotherapy and particularly relational needs within psychotherapy and how it's very important for a psychotherapist to look for uh, the, the relational needs um, that will occur, that will show up within the therapy process um, between the therapist and the clients. Okay, so let's start with uh, Eric Byrne. Her boy, Byrne was the uh, creator of Transaction Analysis in 1960. In talking about uh, recognition and relationships, he came up with three particular psychological hungers that the infant uh, will need. The need for structure, the need for stimulus and the need for recognition. In other words, the need for social relationships. And he talked about uh, the client's need for recognition, the need for strokes, and if there are no positive strokes around, he or she will search out negative strokes or negative rec recognition. And it's the negative strokes and the negative recognition that lead to the problems in self-esteem, self-worth, self-value, and those will be replicated in later life in terms of negative script beliefs. Okay, Heinz Cohert, a psychoanalyst, also around at the time of Byrne. He started the self-psychology movement up in 1970-71 in the United States and he postulated that uh, the analyst needs to analyze the relationship between the early caretakers and the infant because it's through the creation of self objects and negative self objects um, you know in other words the objects that the client internalizes from the caretakers that early value self-esteem self-worth is formulated so if the therapist analyzes that dynamic process and how the negative self internalized objects are um, causing problems in psychological development then cure is more likely to follow in terms of the healing process between the analyst and the um, client if those relational needs that will occur um, get dealt with in the therapy relationship. Richard Erskine went even further he was a psychotherapist, TA trained, Gestalt trained, who very much believed in relationship psychotherapy and a contact oriented psychotherapy. For him, if the healthy contact uh, was disturbed, if there was a deficit in that contact, then uh, the uh, issues uh, would uh, come for, forward in the therapy later. And needed to be looked at, attended to, and accounted for. So he came up with eight relational needs, an eight stage model, and he said that these relational needs um, will occur from childhood to death, and that in a healthy framework between caretakers and child, these relational needs of the child will be attuned to, attended to, accounted for, and therefore satisfied. And if this doesn't happen, um, if there's discounting by the caretakers, neglect by the caretakers, or even ignoring of these relational needs, uh, then problems will occur later in life uh, in the emotional and psychological processes. And the psychotherapist needs to be very vigilant um, in looking out for these relational needs that will occur um, from the client in the therapeutic process and the therapist needs to attune themselves um, and account for these relational needs in a different way um, than the early history of the client and it's through this process that a transformational um, process will occur and healing is likely um, to be self-evident.
So it's this healing process who are tending to these relational needs in a different way of the person's history, that their self-esteem will be improved, their valuing of themselves will be more positive, their likelihood for importance and success will increase, and uh, their psychological position in life in terms of feeling okay and other people being okay will be vastly improved. Okay, those uh, eight relational needs are in that frame there that you can all see. Security, a need for valuing, a need for acceptance, a need for mutuality, a need for self-definition, a need for self-impact, a need for other initiation, and a need for self-love and expressing affection and care. These are all so important. Fundamental relational needs um, and Erskine really did um, put forward and argue um, quite vigorously that the psychotherapist needs to really take account of the relational needs that will occur in the therapeutic process and if he does that there will be a satisfaction of being met by the clients and those relational needs will go that are met will go in the background and others might come to the forefront but as they're met they will um, be satisfied and reduce and as the person's relational needs are actually healed and met perhaps for the first time effective psychotherapy will happen um, the person's self-esteem will improve they will feel more important, more valued. They will love themselves in a much more self-accepting way. And this is the road to um, effective, melt, effective, healthy mental health. That's what I'd argue. Okay, that's the eight-stage model. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing another presentation soon on how you work with uh, these relational needs in. Uh, a far more in-depth way. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.